Hi everybody, Isaac Toops here from Toops Meadery in beautiful mid-city New Orleans, and we're making fried pork chop sandwiches, son. We marinate the pork chop, this is essential. If you don't marinate it, your breading is gonna fall off. Your pork chop will look bad, you will look bad, and don't tell everybody you made my sandwich. So we're gonna take our buttermilk. Buttermilk has a natural acidity to help cut some of the fat. Also, it's nice and viscous, so it sticks to the pork chop. I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of smoky green. You can get that from the Toops Meadery. Uh, or your favorite hot sauce. Don't skip the hot sauce, you weenie. I'm gonna add our freshly cracked black pepper and our kosher salt. I'm going to taste it. It tastes good. Now, if I put the pork chops in there, then I have to suck on raw pork. And I'm not even touching that joke with a 10-foot pole. I'm gonna add our pork chops, give them a good toss and turn, making sure each one is coated properly. Now that we're properly mixed, we're gonna wrap this up. We're gonna fridge this for 12 to 24 hours. Don't forget, you can do this ahead of time, kids. All right, now it's pickle time, my favorite time. We're gonna slice these on our finger taker offer. This thing will take your fingertip off. Be careful, go slow. So you can take off the first little butt end, boom, just like that. We get the butt out of here. Check, make sure our slices are about, yay. And we're gonna cram these into our vessel. Any food safe device will work. Boom, God, it's like we meant to do this. All right, now for the pickle brine, half vinegar, half water. This works for every pickle on the planet. Chili flake for the heat, sugar for the sweet, salt for the savory, curry powder for the color and the flavor. I'm a vinegar nerd, so I end up being a pickle nerd because that's the best iteration of vinegar out there. At the meadery, we have 15 different pickles at all times. Yes, I'm nuts, a vinegar dork all the way. We're starting to come to a little simmer here. Now, you don't need to simmer this for very long. Really, we're just kind of melting the sugar and making sure the red chili flake is releasing its juices very carefully since this is very hot. And if you're good, you get it right to the top. All right, we're gonna set these in the fridge. These will stay good in your fridge for at least six weeks. I've never had a pickle go bad on me until somebody reaches their dirty fingers. The bacteria on your fingers are the pickle's worst enemy. Use a fork, use a pair of tongs. So fridge, for at least overnight, or if in an emergency, fridge until they're just cold and they'll be ready to rock, but better after 24 hours. Pickle time. We've got our pickles taken care of, it's mayonnaise time. Yeah, I say mayonnaise, I don't know how you say it right. Screw you. Technically, the only difference between mayonnaise and aioli is garlic. Let's not get too caught up on what we're calling these things. This is mayonnaise. So, we have espresso powder. Now, a lot of people don't use it in savory cooking. Don't do that. Coffee is delicious. Coffee is used in sweets, and in this case, in savory. It gives its wonderful earthy flavor, and I just fucking my coffee. Put your coffee powder in, your liquids, but not your oils. We have our brown sugar, a little bit of salt, and the binder. This is the catalyst to emulsify the eggs, uh, vinegar, and oil. Can't skip the mustard. I'm gonna crack our eggs, and we're only gonna use the yolks. Use this little trick here where you crack the egg and use the actual shell help cut it off. Now, save your egg whites if you want for your fancy ass egg white omelet trying to be healthy. That sounds like it sucks. So now that we've got everything except our oil into the food processor, gonna get this thing hooked up and we're just gonna give it a couple of pulses. That's gonna ensure that our espresso instant powder gets blended up nicely. Now, with this thing running, we're gonna pour our oil in. Now, everybody always pours the oil in nice and slow at first. And then line cooks like to do this and take forever, which this blade is moving so fast, you can really just kind of pour it in after that. Don't go all slow or I'll make fun of you. And I sure enough, it broke it. <laughs> did I add everything? Yeah, I sure did. What a fuck up. Hold on, hold on. Give me, no, no, give me two more egg yolks. I can fix this. You can do it by hand, but you'll never get the tech, like the whipped texture by hand. Please work. <laughs> Got my reputation on the line. There it is. You hear it? You hear it? That's mayonnaise sound. Coffee mayonnaise! We did it! We did it, folks. No Isimos. We did it. Am I saying that right? I like my mayonnaise like I like my women. Thick. <laughs> Don't hit me. Wow. My wife. We're gonna transfer our mayonnaise to our bowl using our rubber spat. And the trick with the RoboCoop that no one's ever taught anybody, but I teach everybody, is you got a whole bunch of sauce down there. Well, how do I get it off the blade? Well, it's a pain in the ass to try to get it off the blade with the rubber spatula. And the, the trick is you do, you put it back on, you put it back on, you put it back on. Help! And then click it in. Oh, yep. oh. And you give it a quick pulse, boom. 
take it off again, and now, ta-da, your blade is clean. And then clear it out, because every little bit counts since you paid for it. Always gets me up my, my cook's asses when they leave good product in the food processor. All right, we got our pork chops marinating, we got our pickle pickles, and we got our mayonnaise made. Let's bread some chops. First, we're gonna make our seasoned breadcrumb mixture. This dish is great because all the seasoning, all the spice, all the salt is in the buttermilk and the breadcrumbs. So you don't have to season the pork chops before or after. Add our kosher salt, fresh ground black pepper. I cannot stress fresh ground and black pepper. Cayenne pepper, because you know we gotta bring the heat. This looks like a lot, but it's not really because it's gonna be spread over several pork chops. At this level, Powders act more like a liquid than they do a, a solid. So the, the whisking action is actually gonna be a lot easier to mix it up. Now that we've got everything mixed up, pour this in a wide container. Now that we have our breadcrumbs laid out nice, we're just gonna take our chops out of the buttermilk, just give them a quick flick from the excess buttermilk. And you're gonna keep one hand dry and keep one hand wet, wet, dry hand. You're never gonna get this one wet, never gonna get this one dry. Really pack the pork chops in. Get a, put a big mound of breadcrumb right on top and give it a press. Flip it over, do the same thing. You cannot bread these too much. Pick it up and keep, keep it going till once you pick it up, it's completely and utterly perfectly breaded. Pork chop sandwich is something you get like at the gas station or at one of the little stops in Cajun country. All right, it's pork chop time. We got our oil, 350, peanut oil I prefer, but if you don't like peanut oil, canola oil is fine. And we're going to very, very, very gently lower our pork chops one at a time, being careful not to knock the breading off into our fryer. You don't want to drop it because it will splash up. You will burn yourself. Don't do that. Nice and gently. Don't overcrowd your pan. If you overcrowd your pan, you will reduce the temperature of your cooking oil, and then you'll have soggy, not crispy pork chops, and that's the whole purpose of deep frying. You're looking for golden brown delicious, but also have an internal thermometer handy at all times because you want to take these to about 140, 145 for a perfectly cooked pork chop. You take them to 165, they're gonna carry over to 170, 180, your pork chops will be dry. Don't tell people it was my recipe. This is exactly what you wanna eat for a hangover. You got your protein, you got your grease. It's a little bit of sweet from, from the mayonnaise. You got your white bread. You're just sitting there in the corner over trash can going, you ever, you ever been so hungover you eat with your eyes closed? You can serve this in a wide variety of ways. A great way to have it is just with mashed potatoes and gravy. That's a great way to have a pork chop. You can put an egg on top of it. You can put it on a sandwich like we're doing it now. You can honestly serve this cold right out the refrigerator and eat it with your bare hands. I know I've done it before. Treat it like your Popeyes. Now in between frying pork chops, let your oil come back up to the 350. Don't throw them in cold oil, you're gonna mess it up. That looks the part right there, so I'm just gonna pull it. Nice and gently, you're gonna put it on a resting rack. If you don't have a resting rack, paper towels will work. Just want to absorb some of that grease. And again, be whoop, very gentle, because if you're not gentle, that happens, and your fried stuff gets knocked off. So don't do like I just did. Be more gentle with it. All right, we got our pork chops fried. They're golden brown and delicious. We got our accoutrements in the back. We got our white bread. Boom, cheaper the better, trust me. We got our coffee mayonnaise, which we made earlier. Got the old squash pickle. Got our fork for our squash pickle to keep your dirty fingers out. And we got some lettuce. The lettuce is optional, quite honestly. One piece of bread, one pork chop, ah, ah, ah. A good, healthy bit of mayonnaise. Really, just kind of dump it on. Pickles, the trick with the pickles, you want a piece of pickle with every bite. Don't be stingy with your pickles. Lay it on. Trust me with this. Another piece of bread. You get where I'm going with this? The lovable pork chop sandwich. We're going to get master with this. This is chopped up. Mm -hmm, good. And if you're good like I do, don't be afraid. Suck on the bone. My favorite thing about this dish. All right, guys, that's the Toops Meatery Fried Pork Chop Stack. Come get you some. Click on the link below for the recipe. If not, come see me in New Orleans. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> That's love right there. That's going in the end. That is. Gotta get a Amanda Cam in the video anyway. Amanda Cam.